Witam Państwa serdecznie. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Czy to działa? Działa. Te badania, które przedstawię. Studies whose results I am going to talk about were conducted in 2019 and 2020. Jak już wiedzieliśmy, że pandemia wpadła, to When we realize that the pandemic is ongoing, przed pandemią i w trakcie pandemii, I actually constructed a new column, inserted a new column in my Excel file, pre-pandemic and post-pandemic, because actually this could be a confounding variable. I used to be involved in the sociology of religion, and I studied being religious, and actually at some point, uh, the Pope died. Suddenly, I had to stop because every factor, like or every question, for instance, did you go to mass or did you participate in mass during the past month, uh, was answered yes, following the death of John Paul II. Now, our results of this study are very optimistic. Frequently, we say, well, young people are addicted. Everyone plays, everyone is online. Well, it turns out that this is not necessarily the case. The studies uh, were uh, conducted by the Dbam o Muzashing Foundation and the University of Gdańsk. The studies were uh, an element of a project conducted by the um, Halina Konopacka uh, Foundation. Gaming constitutes a uh, time and entertainment. This is also money most and mo more and more frequently. More and more frequently, uh, we also have games that are educational and that uh, constitute an element of uh, training or education, for instance, in math or physics. And frequently, we are not satisfied with ourselves, our partner, our children, losing time in internet because we think about the amount of time that we devote to being online. But gaming or the problem that we discuss today shows us that we should be asking ourselves, all right, but it's not only about the amount of time. It's also about the quality of what I'm doing. My son, Antosh, is 10 years old. Sometimes I see that what he does, what he's doing is unproductive. Then I actually pay attention to uh, the fact that actually he should stop, for instance, gaming or being online. But when I see that uh, the, the added value of what he's doing online, irrespective of the fact that he spends uh, more time than he should online, uh, then I'm more lenient, so to speak, towards him spending time online when I see uh, that this is actually quite beneficial. Secondly, losing control over gaming can become a huge problem. A gaming disorder now constitutes an element of the ICD-11 classification. Psychologists and therapists uh, discuss whether this is addiction or dependency, depending on what game we play. On the other hand, clinicians and psychiatrists point out to the fact that in their uh, uh, that in their offices there are people who lost control over gaming completely and actually they they are losing their lives their health 
because of gaming. And I'm not only talking about mental or social health. Actually, uh, spiritual and physical health uh, can be lost as well. Our respondents, students uh, aged 20 to 18, see a number of advantages of gaming. These advantages are not only related to improved concentration, uh, to better focus, to hand uh, enhanced eye hand con coordination. They also see social advantages. Currently, an advantage lies in other people gaming. So our respondents told us that this could be a short time. I agree that the internet is neither good or bad, but the use can be uh, good or bad. But in my opinion, any overusing of new technologies uh, is bad. Still, we have parents calling the foundation, asking for support, uh, saying that the child is uh, dependent or addicted, but but at the same time recognizes the added values of gaming. This study related to uh, gaming behavior of uh, children and adolescents in Poland. We conduct studies on large samples, and this is because uh, schools or parents are given uh, the results of their students. Schools are coded, and based on that, for instance, we can say uh, the result of, let's say, 220 students of a certain school because we know their code. But now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to show you something that will be launched uh, on the 14th of November and we will show these results on a conference at a conference in Gdynia. These are results of a study we conducted together with the foundation. And this study uh, is about the quality of relations at school. We are interested not only in these relations, we also uh, studied uh, the culture of uh, free time problems that uh, adolescents uh, deal with, uh, mental health. And speaking about that, we had a screening test for depression, and actually one-third of uh, the students should be diagnosed against depression. Actually, uh, this situation is tragic. Uh, when it comes to young girls, when actually uh, this um, percentage increases up to 50, and we actually analyzed 51,000 uh, and over 800 uh, students. Now we asked uh, about uh, the, the problems that actually became more apparent post-pandemic as opposed to pre-pandemic. Now, Mark Red, you you have something that is related to um, using electronic devices or being online. Now we have screen fatigue, uh, dependency um, on the technology. And actually we very frequently see signals that uh, the adolescents' problems relate to being online. Speaking about entertainment and leisure time. We asked our respondents about entertainment that they engaged in uh, post-pandemic as opposed to pre-pandemic. Seven out of ten of these relates to new technologies. Well, I'm very glad we have lectures about introducing new technologies uh, into the world of children. But what about an alternative to the digital world? 
What about the culture of uh, using your free time? What about being in open air? What about uh, digital hygiene? Irrespective of our point of view that we take. And actually, uh, I'm just going to mention that I also make mistake. Well, anyway, balance is my key word now. It's not about uh, telling your kid that they cannot uh, be online. It's about building, constructing alternatives, because every child without any alternative will spend online. Because where should uh, the, the, the child go? Let's think about the problems of modern adolescents when it comes to gaming. This is not addiction. This is not dependency. Polish people, Polish, sorry, adolescents uh, are usually not addicted uh, to new technologies. Two to three percent of people, of young people, are addicted. How many people are addicted? 50 percent? 70 percent? Well, the results of the studies that uh, I'm referring to show that it's not about addiction. Well, it's not about addiction, you know, falling from the sky. Similarly, uh, a two, three-year-old year kid uh, is not faced suddenly for, with a tablet that falls on him or her from the sky. Well, se several years ago, when I launched the foundation, I thought that we will change children. But more and more, I believe that it's parents that we have to change. Our generation fails by withdrawing from the digital world of children. I agree with Professor Pyzalski that uh, adolescents are not creative using internet resources. So actually, we are very frequently amazed by what the children can do. But if you actually ask the kid you know, to plan a trip somewhere, they fail. So where is the problem? The problem lies in digital hygiene. So without uh, any delving into too much details, we are hygienic when uh, using online resources positively affects our health in contrast to negative, what negatively affects our health. If we are overloading the, with information, if we just gobble up our food because we browse online, we are not uh, addicted yet, but definitely we have a problem with using uh, new technologies on a day-to-day basis. So, uh, of course, the lack of digital hygiene could manifest in a number of situations. Driving with uh, your mobile phone in your hand, that happens all the time going to bed with your phone, looking at your phone just after you wake up. I remember those studies from 2017-2019, and uh, a significant percentage of people woke up and started to use their phone. It was one in 10 people. Do you know why? Because the phone was in their bedroom. If they put the phone outside the bedroom, there would be a less chance they would use it. If we do nothing with uh, digital hygiene, then, as simple as that, we are going to misuse uh, the technologies. There is a number of things that we do improperly. I eat improperly, for example, myself. But somebody else could say they study improperly. Three days ahead of their final exam, they say, oh my gosh, the exam is coming. 
So we shop differently, we eat differently, we drink, including alcohol, differently. Some people could be uh, uh, teetotalers, other people could be uh, alcoholics, some people drink only during conferences. So it varies. If I was asked to tell you where Polish young people are, they are at those two levels, luckily, because those are social and cultural levels. So we can do quite a lot in here. Here, but if we miss the boat here, we are going to have habits and dependencies. And this is what I'm talking about. New technologies uh, form a very strong attachment because using them feels pleasant to us. So I took the liberty to modify my slide during the break. I'm not sure uh, who uh, mentioned all those interesting books to read. Let's read about our brain and what it does. Our brain loves habits because they save energy. And if you uh, used to uh, go to sleep with your mobile phone, your brain will do everything so that you don't ever consider reading from a book before going to bed. Those books are really recommendable. Maybe you are aware of that, that there are two guidelines for parents that I'm recommending. Oftentimes we do not have the time to look for information. We as parents, we as teachers, we often ask for specifics. Agnieszka Taper, Mikołaj, Marcela, those are the handbooks for you, and uh, they um, provide very simple, sometimes simplish uh, information about what to do. So I'm going to skip one slide, and I will just say that the Internet is so interesting. The games are so immersive because they satisfy our needs. The Internet satisfies our needs. Of course, if it was so good at doing that, maybe we wouldn't have so many people coming to uh, psychotherapists about their uh, online use patterns. But if the parents uh, fail to notice that, then they will not uh, move forward. And it's going to be easier to withdraw and pretend that Minecraft does not exist, even if uh, they could understand that it really matters for the children. We can talk all all day about new technologies, but they are not the problem. The problem is oftentimes in the poor relation, poor quality of relation between the parents and the children. So if I was supposed to say what's the biggest competence of the future and what we should tell our students and our children, it's to care for relations and to maintain relations in the right way. <laughs> okay, so now about my results. Yes, uh, that was a large-scale uh, study. The study group was uh, almost 36,000 uh, students. As we can see, the gaming time uh, for 38.5% uh, of the respondents was every day, so it's a significant percentage of our leisure time. 30% of students uh, do sports every day as compared to almost 40% of gamers. Maybe they were talking about esports here, but I'm not convinced about that. So uh, almost 39% of students game every day. So it's not right that everybody plays games. No. Our studies have shown that two thirds of students have played a game at least once over last year. That could be any game. We didn't ask them what were the games. So if somebody said no, then we said, OK, finish the survey, and that's it. But those people were condemned because they had to continue in the survey. 
So, of course, we have a publication. Now we're going to have some research articles based on that. But what we saw is the increasing percentage of people who play games after the pandemic has started. This seems quite obvious. We were locked up at homes. So we couldn't go to school or school was done remotely. So even if you did not play, uh, you could start because this percentage increased by 16 percent. But we did not do a follow-up analysis here. One in three people uh, plays games regularly. Um, one third started gaming more often than two years ago. So we can see uh, the increased incidence here. 42 percent of students play uh, on digital games very often or often when they feel bored. This is the problem. Hey, parents, do something to avoid boredom. My auntie also tends to abuse new technologies. But do you know when? When I'm a lazy parent. There is no other option. Or when I'm tired. But uh, if only we have quality time, Antec can give up on those new technologies. Benefits. We have a plethora of benefits. Seven out of ten students, uh, they are faster in reactions. Seventy per uh, percent said they have spent their time more creatively. Sixty-two percent of students said they have better orientation in space. And they are better in decision making. It all uh, is referring to gaming and what kind of games they play. Of course, there is a number of benefits of gaming. Uh, we have uh, some online posters. We can uh, email them to you. And they show that there is a number of benefits from uh, digital gaming. It's motivating. It promotes empathy. It uh, develops your scientific interests. It helps you learn foreign languages. It could uh, promote interaction with your grandparents, which will uh, my world uh, br be closer to the world of my parents or my grandparents. But of course, we have some adverse consequences here, too. Luckily, in the opinion of the students, they are not far reaching. So if the youth is experiencing something negative, it's about those current things. I forgot to do my homework. Uh, I forgot about the classes. I had a fight with my parents. I forgot to walk my dog or to feed my cat. But today, uh, at least based on our results, uh, we cannot say that uh, Polish adolescents are losing friends because of gaming. No, it's actually vice versa. They are finding new friends. Of course, there could be also a variety of adverse consequences. We also know that gaming does not increase violence levels, but it sort of makes you uh, used to violence. If I I keep playing GTA and running people over in the streets. It could be immersive. I could look around uh, watching out for cars trying to run me down. Or I could think, hmm, maybe I could run this uh, person down. But if we play games which are so bloody, um, we won't be uh, able to notice some uh, violence of a parent against a child in the real world, in the street, because it wouldn't be as bloody as the game. So uh, are the adolescents uh, dependent on games? No, it's only 2%. Those disorders uh, in gaming, um, they were quite comprehensive. But if we looked at all those aspects, we could say that only 2% of our respondents are showing clear symptoms of uh, abusive gaming. Are they dependent on that? Probably they would be underdiagnosed, but it would be a good idea to look at them. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, parent involvement in uh, the digital world is uh, really at a minimum level. I'm referring here to the first lecture. Hey, parents, learn about the games. Psychologists and psychotherapists who provide therapy for people who are uh, addicted to gaming, they go to courses, they learn about the structures of games.
they do that in order to be able to understand what their patients are telling them when they say uh, uh, using this new slang, when they use all this new language. Maybe I should also learn about Pokemons, because if you uh, look for Pokemons, you might lose weight. So maybe it's good for you. Dear colleagues, when is the best time to talk about those issues? Try to imagine they are, that I uh, am visiting birth schools quite intensively nowadays. This is the right moment to talk about two things. Hey, watch out, you're just about to have a baby. Remember about surveillance, remember about those uh, uh, tablets, about those potties with some arms to attach tablets to them. Remember about the digital world. And dear parents, remember that whatever you do, the most important protective factor for your, ch your children will be a well-built relation. And the last uh, thing, last but not least, I have invented this uh, digital involvement scale for childhood. It was composed of nine items. The more points you got here, the more your childhood was digitalized. And uh, childhood was, uh, in my understanding, the uh, age prior to school age. So the children were thinking about the time when they were about to go to school. So when I call correlated my scale with a scale of new technologies abuse, telephones, the internet, uh, problem using of the internet, problem use of social media, then I found out uh, quite straightforward that the more digitalized uh, your childhood is, the bigger the problem with teenagers. The more problems uh, they have using new technologies when they turn into teenagers. Join us uh, in November in Gdynia when we talk about a healthy school, about the needs of students and teachers. If I was to say what's going to be the biggest problems of contemporary schools, it wouldn't be new technologies, but it would be the problem with depression. Thank you. Thank you so much for this extremely interesting presentation, great data and great insights. P please stay with us because we have a question, so how to involve the parents? What can we do to make them aware about their responsibility for their child development? So how can we involve uh, the parents being educators and teachers? My experience with the parents at school are no good. They are the last to come to school, and when they come there, they shouldn't even be there in the first place, because those who should be at school are not even aware they should visit the school. So uh, about your question, first and foremost, many of us uh, parents, people from our generation, have a very uh, negative stereotypes about new technologies. That's one. So we should say, hey, parent, think about it. Maybe this Minecraft or another game can be good, can be something positive. So this stereotype, uh, the new technologies, that's one. And secondly, the internet and what's happening online is important for the children. And and thirdly, we should also uh, consider that the games that children are playing uh, uh, today is not the treasure island I used to play on my Commodore 64 that I could pause and go to school before it even launched. And uh, number three, it's also really important, when we were small, our parents uh, We've got this uh, parental mindfulness. If you are a non-pathological parent, you pay attention to what the child is doing. When we were small, our parents were uh, 
paying attention to what we did in the real world. There was no virtual world back then. Now my mindfulness has to extend uh, to what my child does in the real space, but also what they do virtually. It's not just about talking to children, but know their characters, play with them, talk to them. Like uh, Professor said before, the worst thing that we can do is pretend that Minecraft does not exist. That was one question, right? Yes, we had just one question. And thank you very much. I think it's a very good summary of what we have said so far.